Welcome to a very special edition of Lexington Remembers. Um, we're delighted to have uh, uh, as our guest today Sophia Ho, um, who uh, represents a, a growing community in, in town, uh, the Chinese American community. Um, I'm really kind of surprised we haven't talked with Sophia long before this. When I came back to town in, in 1969, her, her name was on everybody's lips uh, because she was so active and so involved uh, uh, already. Uh, and so I'm, I'm delighted that she was willing to, to be with us. So tell us, uh, Sophia, tell us about Tell us your story. Tell us about okay. your family. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say now with a growing, uh, fastly growing uh, Chinese American uh, uh, people in, moving into Lexington, uh, I could hardly say that I can represent uh, the whole community. I would like to say that uh, I'm just here as an individual, an old Lexingtonian uh, who's lived here for 48 years and uh, so it's just my own private story yeah okay, okay. sometimes I would say about the other community and but mainly mainly uh, we were we lived in Cambridge before we came here and then uh, when Larry got tenure we say we, we killed by a house and uh, at that time several of his colleagues what, what was Larry doing then oh he was assistant professor at Harvard and after four years he got tenure and before that we didn't want to buy a house because what did we have to sell well, and uh, so when he got tenure we thought the kids were too and, and, and his field is uh, well he's uh, way way back his degree was in applied math but then he's changed and uh, modified uh, into other fields and uh, automatic control, optimal control is really his field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, where did where did he get his degree? Where did he? Uh, he came to this country to go to MIT. So he got his first. So he was born in China. He was born in China. Yeah. yeah. He came in 1950. Got his degree from MIT. He went uh, to Detroit to work for three years and then decided to get his PhD. He came back and uh, he had a choice of Harvard or somewhere in the West Coast. He decided to come back to Harvard. Of course. Oh my heavens. <laughs> but I also say of course. If he didn't come to Harvard, he wouldn't have met me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. That was his good choice. That's right. <laughs> so, because I was going to school uh, in Connecticut. Where? Uh, it's in a very small Catholic school. It no longer in existence. You know, Catholic, small Catholic girls' colleges just couldn't survive. Yeah. So, it's closed. And uh, I had four years there, and I met, met Larry, got married, I moved to first to Boston. Were you living in Connecticut? Uh, yeah, that where you yeah. South, South Woodstock. Okay. It's, it's very, very isolated. Yeah. Uh, it's just the south of, uh, it's called, the biggest town is Putnam. It's just south of Worcester. Yeah, okay. But it's in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Good place to study, not to have fun. <laughs> it was no fun. And did you, where did you come from? Did you come from I came Connecticut? from Taiwan in 1949 when uh, the communists came over. We, my father and our whole family moved to Taiwan. So I finished junior high and senior high. And then I got a scholarship to come here. To that, to that, to that, to uh, uh, Amherst is called Amherst, not Amherst. Yeah, right. A double N H U R S T, okay. Amherst College. It's small, but good for me because I didn't speak English, not much. Lonely, away from family. I was the only one. So a small school, more personal. 
Mm -hmm. That was good for me. And I had to learn English because I was the only one of the only two Chinese students there. So I missed Chinese food because American food, cheese macaroni, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't know didn't like, like that. cheese macaroni. No. Okay. And and what about your parents? Did you, well they did lived they in, stay there? in Taiwan, yeah. Uh -huh. Later, I was the first one of my family to come here. Mm -hmm. Then later on, my brothers came one after the other. Mm -hmm. They all got some kind of fellowship. My next one came was uh, John. John came to Notre Dame. He was accepted by MIT, but Notre Dame gave him $1,000. Mm -hmm. There was no choice. He had yeah. no money. We had no money. Yeah. So he went to Notre Dame. What did your father do? My father was a general in Chiang Kai-shek's army. Mm -hmm. He fought first the Japanese, then the communists. Mm -hmm. Thus, we had to leave. Mm -hmm. If we did leave Beijing, we'd be killed. Yeah. We'd be killed. So, yeah. we had to leave. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, did we, did we... We were saying that, uh, how did I, we can, came to uh, Yeah, but I, was, but I was wondering about Larry, why, what brought, what brought him here? Well, at that time, or even now, um, people want to go to America. America is heaven. Yeah. It, the land is paved with gold. Yeah. Uh, but even if the land is paved with gold, you still have picked it up. The gold does not come to you. If you work hard, it's land opp opportunity. If you're willing to work hard, uh, you come here, you have a chance. And that's why Larry came. Uh, Larry came to go to school. Um, so it was the trend. Right. It's like people just came to America. N not so much now. I, I mean, still people come. Want. Everybody wants to come to America, of course. Yeah. Mm, but at that time, uh, the political situation, Taiwan, we don't know if Taiwan is safe or not. Yeah. And uh, so coming to America is uh, going to heaven almost. Right, right. So everybody comes. And so you were living in Cambridge. And we were living in Cambridge uh, when and he got tenure. Yeah. We decided to buy a house. And uh, his colleagues, Professor Bryson, lived in Lexington. Arthur Bryson. Uh, Bryson. Lived right next to me on Pharaoh's Drive. Wonderful <laughs> fellow. And of course, uh, uh, several others, and of course schools. We had a two-year-old, a four-year-old. So we came. I don't know if you remember, when we first came, Lexington did not have public kindergarten. Right. Our daughter, Christine, was the, her class was the first kindergarten, free public school kindergarten. Uh, so we came here, they went through Esterbrook, Diamond, and uh, Lexington High. We got our money's worth <laughs> with three children yeah. going through the public schools. Yeah. And they and, and well. when was, what year did you We moved here 65. 65. 65. Okay. You want to know how much it was? Yeah, because <laughs> then I'll tell you how much mine was in 1949. So what was yours? In Less than 30,000. Yeah. Less North than 30,000. Road. But of course, he just started, you know, he, he was a poor professor. Yeah. You know that. And uh, we borrowed money. We put 5,000 down, our own money. 5,000 borrowed from Harvard and 5,000 from the bank. And that was the down payment we bought our house. And it was small house and uh, but it's a lovely place yeah great neighbors we've yeah. never moved yeah yeah I know <laughs> well I bought mine in, <clears throat> on Pharaoh's Drive in 49 it was 12,500 now you can't and, buy a driveway <laughs> well, that's right you can't buy a car <laughs> so so why Lexington of all the, the schools towns in the we've area. heard about the schools but then we discovered, after we moved here, 
first we took a ride. We drove around. We liked it. We found it was Hayden. Now, that was a plus. Yeah. Ah, the kids can go skating, the programs, yeah. and we like that. But after we moved here, we discovered Lexington was so accepting. The people of all colors, and people don't take a special look at you. Our children were the maybe two of the ten Chinese Americans or Asian Americans at Esterbrook. So when they go to school, they look at the, their friends. They don't even know they look like me with an Asian face because they don't see many Asians. Mm -hmm. Now, you think you're in China if you go to Esther. <laughs> yeah, right. oh, so many. That is because I think the Chinese people are like the Jewish people. Education comes first. Mm -hmm. We came to go to school mm -hmm. and we want our kids to have a good uh, education. At Lexington is the place we thought. And also because going to Harvard from Lexington is easy. If he worked at MIT, then I don't know, it was kind of a far that. Mm -hmm. And if he worked downtown Boston, then maybe Newton Wellesley would be better mm -hmm. a place for him to work. So since he... Yeah, 20 minutes to uh, Harvard, That's right. 15, so uh, working at Harvard, Lexington is easy to get to. And uh, we thought the school, of course, but after we got here, we found the people. We liked the people. That's why we never moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in that because um, <clears throat> when I moved here, um, and it was still somewhat true when you moved here, although I was away from 61 to 69. Um, when I moved here, uh, the, the town was run by a handful, really, of, of Yankees, white Anglo-Saxon yes. Protestants. It had a very significant Irish population and a very significant Italian population. Yes. Almost no Jewish families um, because they couldn't buy a house in most, most parts of town. And, and um, a very small number, we've always had small number of, of uh, African-American families and Hispanic families. When, when you moved here, it wasn't quite as true because there had been a big in-migration. But, <clears throat> but very few Chinese-Americans, right? Uh, yes, I remembered. Uh, we were saying maybe the 20 families. We know of eight families. There may be another 10 or 20 like that. We didn't know. But I thought the Jewish people moved in. Then the Chinese followed the Jewish. Then the Korean, the Indians all followed. Yeah, I think that's yeah, true. The Jewish I moved in first. That's right. Uh, during the during the 60s. Yeah. Um, the uh, so there was a <coughs> big change in in. Oh, yes. in the population. Now, wh what was the town like in 65? Uh, it was, do you remember Mrs. Baker? Yeah. She had a um, fabric place uh, in where Yancey River is now, over yeah. there, Woolworth, and it's a small town atmosphere. Uh, uh, there's Lexington Gardens. I'm sorry to say Lexington has changed so much. It, I like the old one. A little change is okay, but I think it's changed so much. Uh, uh, it was like small town. How, how has it changed? How has it changed? Well, small business moved away. CVS came to the center, replaced, and uh, restaurants, banks. I don't know why we have so many banks. I know the restaurants. I do. Tell me, because restaurants, you have to eat. There's a lot of money in this town. That's what people tell me. But each time I go to the bank, there's nobody. People say, you don't need people. You have money, but you don't see people. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, yeah the, the banks are empty, but apparently the money is behind the counter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That does, uh, <laughs> but but you're talking about small small town <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, uh, business for is no CVS, no chain, anything. Mario has been there for ages. It's still right. there, right. and uh, I also discovered that. Uh, Real, really expensive restaurants do not do well in Lexington. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once a friend told me, Lexington people are rich yet frugal in the sense that when you need money, donate money, foundations and all that, a uh, carry library and all that, people do donate money. But when it comes to Restaurants, maybe family restaurants, <laughs> do mm -hmm. better than mm -hmm. the upscale French. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, we had a Versailles. Oh, we uh, did, that's well, right. right. And did not do well. It's the everyday Bertucci's and uh, Mario's, the Yancey River. Uh, Be alive, do, huh? uh, Yeah, because people eat family. Hello, well. Lex does very well. We had a variety of small enterprises owned and run by people who lived in town. Mrs. Baker, Gabe Baker, Monders. Yes. And, you know. uh, well, Doran Farm is closed, and that's an old Lexington family. And uh, Lexington Garden is gone. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Milligan, always yeah. in his red vest. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And uh, yeah. then sold it. And now the houses are one point something. Two yeah. point something. Yeah. Humongous. Yeah. We live around there. I drive by it every day. Yeah. So so it so it has a different feel to it. A different it feel to it. And uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, Lexington Garden's gone. We have to go to uh, Wilson Farm or Winchester. What's uh, Mahoney's? Mahoney. So I think it is definitely changing in terms of the town itself and of course the population. Now there's twenty percent of Asians. Yeah. Now what? Tell me about that. Um, what percentage of the town is is Asian? Okay, Asian is twenty, at least twenty. Uh, in the twenty, ten percent, approximately ten percent Chinese Americans, and uh, five percent each of the Indians and the Koreans. Mm -hmm. Then a small uh, group of. Uh, Cambodians, Vietnamese, Japanese, and uh, Southeast Asians. But Chinese population is definitely 10%. Of course, we all came because of the schools. Um, it, it's interesting how this happens. Uh, Framingham is 20-25% Brazilian. Uh, we don't have any no. Hispanics to speak of. So there's, there's a kind of a clustering that, that happens, oh, do you think? Yeah, yeah, because say you moved here and your friends say, how's Lexington? You say it's wonderful. And people like minorities, especially those who are shy and who who's afraid of new things, would say, okay, I moved to Lexington because... Because there are a lot of people that's right. it's a, like me that's there. Right. Magnet, and it, I think that's a natural phenomenon. Uh, and and, and uh, these uh, Chinese American families, they live pretty much all over town, or all do over they town. cluster? Uh, no, all over town. Uh, years, years ago, I would say 20 years ago, when there were not so many, I took a look. Precinct 9 has the most, Precinct 1 has the least. Right now, I think it's, uh, I, I haven't tabulated anything, it's just too many to. Yeah, to do right. so. But I think it's evenly. Uh, Precinct 6 has a lot. Precinct, yeah. yeah. Now, um, mainland Chinese, Taiwanese, which most of them... <coughs> well, it, in, in the 50s, mainland China was closed. Yeah. You know, Iron Curtain. Yeah. So people came from China from the 50s, 60s, 70s until China opened up in 79, the 80s. And then by then, the Taiwan Chinese 
I don't say them Taiwanese because even though I came from Taiwan, but I wasn't born in Taiwan. Right. So right. I'm not considered Taiwanese. So right. the people from Taiwan stopped coming uh, around the uh, 70s or 80s. And when the mainland China opened up, people just came, just like when I came, except 30 years later. Yeah. And they came, and there's plenty, plenty of people, and they're very <laughs> smart, doing well, hard working, and uh, they all came here and decide this is a place for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They chose to be here. Now you said that that when when you moved here in the mid '60s, <clears throat> you found a very welcoming kind yes. of community. You didn't. People didn't stare at you. People didn't. That's right. Uh, people v very accepting, and especially in our neighborhood, because that's a new development. It was a farm, uh, North Emerson Road, Angier, and uh, Diamond. It was a farm, so they built peacock farm style houses there, and it was all new. Our neighbors are new. If you move into a, an established neighborhood, you might find you can't get to know people. But since everybody's new, I need you, you need her, she needs me. So it's a very, I felt very much at home. And my friend Edie next doors, she taught me all about. Edie Sandy. Edie Sandy. She said she was running for town meeting. Never heard of. Uh, so she told me about election is run by the selectmen school committee, all volunteers. So I got interested. She got me into this. The whole volunteer life of mine uh, started with Edie Sandy. She wanted me to do make signs, so she hold signs, do this, make phone calls, write postcards. I learned gradually. And uh, in fact, I noticed, I learned about the town book, the Snoopy book. Yeah. And I noticed people, some Chinese Americans were not registered to vote. They live here, they're not registered. So I decided to do a voter registration drive. I got the names, A to Z. I got the Chinese names, look up in the phone book. Got their phone numbers, call information. What's then as a phone number? I have a list. Not too long. Yeah, you right. remember, it's not right. like now. Right. And I gave to friends, I said, please call them. Tell them to go and register. Uh, it's easy. People think you have to dig, dig up your naturalization paper from the same. Yeah. No, you just go there with your mm, driver's license, yeah. register, and do vote. And that was something I started and uh, it became sort of a trend. Right now I tell everybody, go and register. In fact, maybe it's time to do another one. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, well now, were you asking them <clears throat> to register to vote for any particular person? Or were you just saying, hey, you live here, you should be voting? You don't think I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, right now, you know, there's a Chinese-American organization called CAL, C-A-A-L, Chinese-American Association of Lexington. It was established in 1983 because of a, there was a Chinese school. And we have yeah. to rent buildings. In Lexington, you rent the building, you don't pay to that school. You pay to the town. Thus, that school is not very happy to have uh, hundreds of Chinese kids uh, running around on Sundays. They might get into trouble, they might move things. And so there was a little bit of friction between which school we could take. And uh, so this association, a few parents of Chinese school, decided to form an association so to be united, then we can negotiate with the town, uh, the rent, and uh, where to go. Where, where's the school? The school, uh, in the beginning it was a bridge, but when it become bigger, more people moved to Clark. We moved to Clark. So now with the association, we were saying that um, uh, about voting. Right now, Kel holds a forum 
Every February, we invite the school committee and the selectmen candidates to the forum, just like the league's forum. Okay, they have three minutes to make statement and the prepared questions and question from the floor. Why do we want to have that? Because you know, a lot of people are shy. They don't want to ask questions, afraid to ask the wrong questions, or afraid to uh, people might laugh at them. That's why they don't want to go to the big forum, the league holds, but they come to the Chinese American forum. They feel more comfortable with less people. After we talk to the candidates, we have a discussion. How many people come? Up 20, 30. Mm -hmm. And then we discuss it, and then I said, I am for Dan Fan. Why? Okay, Dan's been here, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you might say, I am for Nancy. We discuss it, and we take a vote. So in other words, the results of the candidates, be it one or two, are from a, a, it's informed decision we mm -hmm. make, because we have heard them, we have asked them questions, we feel Dan is the person we want to support. So then we send out to uh, groups saying, Kel endorses Dan and Nancy uh, with a good reason. Uh, it's not just say, I like Dan's look, mm -hmm. okay? It's because we have talked to them and we felt Dan and Nancy are the two we can support. Now, when did this start? When did you have your the first forum, forum? I would say ten, some, uh, more than ten years ago. Really? Okay. Yeah. So. But but the association started around around the school. Uh, 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 it was started by a group of parents, Chinese school uh, parents, in 1983. Oh. And then it didn't do much, 83, until maybe uh, in 1995, mm -hmm. because it was slowing down, it was not really uh, doing much. And a group, new people now, said, we've got to re sort of revive Cal. Ah, then we started having meetings, regular things, uh, decide what to do, uh, participate. But Kell itself at that time was sort of for Chinese Americans. Mm -hmm. It was two years ago. After the leaks, if you remember, at the church, at the um, Catholic Church, downstairs they have a community communication like that. And there I went, Larry went with me, and there were about 150 people. I counted one, two, three, four, five Chinese-looking people. I don't. I didn't even know they were Chinese. I just said, "That's a shame." We live here. We take advantage of all the things Lexington offers. What do we give back? Why? What's an excuse? People say, "Oh, I don't speak English here." Come on. If you have a PhD degree, you speak English, and or. I think the main reason is politics in China, unheard of. You don't say anything. They tell you what to do. That's to be quiet. So people don't know that they could, they should get involved. So after that community get together, I felt bad. And my friend Melanie, a young, talented uh, Chinese American, wrote a letter says, I am ashamed that only five, I only counted five. So I wrote to her, I said, two of us went, and let's do something. Let's see if we can get group people feeling the same way. So I e emailed the group, said, let's get together, talk. So about 20 people showed up. Apparently they are interested, just didn't know how to start, how to get organized. So we pointed out that if you live in Lexington, we really should. There's only one town meeting member, Peter Lee. Peter Lee. Yeah. And so I said, let's do something. And it so happens at that time, uh, Leona Martin was not running for re-election. 
But the housing. Housing. So I said, who wants to do it? Wei Dong Wan said, I'll do it. I wrote to him, I am in heaven. I will do everything I can to help you because they don't know how to run a campaign. And I've run for Jack and uh, for Jack Dukakis, is. Jack Edison, my dear, dear friend, and Dukakis uh, presidential one. So I know uh, how to get organized. And sure enough, he got elected. Wei Dong Wan got elected he to did housing. Indeed. Yeah, and uh, he's doing well. And then last year, we said, uh, town meeting members, uh, uh, there's Wei Dong, there's Peter Lee. And I said, that's not enough. So we got people says, this and that and that. Three more Chinese Americans got in. This and, year? No, last year. Last and year. this year, we tried to encourage it again, and two more got in from Precinct 3 uh, and uh, from Precinct 8. Uh, so we're working at it. I want so we to have get five in. now? Uh, five, six, yeah. Uh, three, two plus Peter, and we don't. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're working so at six, it. Six, six or seven, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Wonderful. So we're working at it, and uh, because mainly I stress, if everybody takes from the pot, it's going to be empty very soon. Mm -hmm. You take some, you put in some. Mm -hmm. For instance, I worked for yes, for uh, overrides, even then our children are way gone. But that's not the point. It's not for me. When we came, we had good schools. Then when we leave, we should leave good schools to the future generation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you and I don't have kids, but we still should maintain our standard. So I want to give back. I want get involved. Uh, to be fair, some the young people right now are two-job family. Unlike me, I stayed home. I was full-time mom, so it is difficult for them to go to daytime meetings, and when the mom comes home, it's tired, but you still have the kids running and that, so they do not have as much time. But I want to point out to them that Edie Sandy was running for town meeting. They had small children. They had to get babysitters to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. They can do it. They have no excuse. Mm -hmm. So. Why can't we do it? Mm -hmm. So now more and more people are aware of it. Now, you think that the main reason that this has been so slow, slow. to come, boy, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been know? a long time. Uh, and, and Ryan Batchen talking about the Indian American community, the same comments, you know, taking a long time. But you think that it's a cultural difference that that in in China you you just didn't you didn't participate you didn't That's get right. into these things. Nobody asked your opinion, and the more you say, the more mistakes you can make. If you make a mistake, you're in trouble. So the best thing is not to say anything. Just do work hard. They all have jobs and they work hard. Uh, but politics, they didn't know about Lexington, small town politics. I feel that if I lived in Boston, what I say probably wouldn't make any difference. But in Lexington, if you say things, people listen. Mm -hmm. And you do, you can, and you do make a difference. I think they was just shy, not knowing, for instance, somebody asked me, uh, uh, can I vote in the town election if, if I'm a Republican or a Democrat? I say, no, 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 there's no parties involved. Everybody who lives in Lexington, registered, can vote. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. So education is part of it. Mm -hmm. That's why two years ago I, I got my friend Edie Sandy to come to talk about town government. Mm -hmm. from the manager, select them and all that, and somebody was surprised to say, they're not paid, <laughs> they, they, they have meetings and do all that, no pay, okay? Just to show that some people don't know much about how the town 
is right. how it works. How it works. Mm -hmm. And then we got um, Burnell, George, to come to a small meeting. And he said, he told me, that uh, there's so many committees. Why don't you join? So I invited him to our group. He talked about it, showed us how many committees, and he said, if you think you're interested in this committee, go in the, to one of the meetings. Listen, sit there, go a couple times. If you think you have interest, tell them. I'm interested to serve you if you, have, if you want more people uh, to volunteer. That's another thing. People, I think Chinese American people just don't do that. If I ask you to serve, you might say yes. But to say you yourself to go to uh, some places, I want to serve. That's uh, it's not uh, in the cultural background. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking a majority. There are always exceptions. And Peter Lee is a second generation. His parents came. He was born here. So is active because he's a native-born American. Yeah. And uh, and it takes us foreign-born people a while uh, to get used to or if you encourage me, you tell me, is this Sophia, you should, uh, do, you can do this and do that, then I might be interested. But if I don't discover it, now, do you think that this this is going to snowball? I mean, the more people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, especially if you have whip behind it. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now let, let let me go back to. It was the fact that you lived next door to Frank and Edie Sandy, and right. Edie said to you one day, "I'm going to run for town meeting." And I said, what? What's what that? Yeah. yeah, what's that? And so she told me the precincts. Mm -hmm. Never heard of precincts. And so she gave me a little basic education. And then she said, if you help me, you learn. So I did. And she said, will you write postcards to people to tell them uh, why you want to support this and that? I said, I can do that. And uh, gradually, I got into it. And uh, then, once you volunteered, when people know about you, Elif asked me, I remember Dr. Geiger organized this, and uh, I, I was very honored to be asked and uh, worked at it. And then the Cary Library asked me, I said, of course, and I I said, I have no trouble asking for money, as long as it's not for me. Yeah, right. Right? It's for the town. Right. And uh, I, I tell them, it's a good investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, everybody should support. If you have $10, it's fine. If you have $1,000, it's fine. Uh, just give. Now, how... Now this thing seems to be started. Yes. Finally. Um, how do the rest of us in town help to keep it going and, and, and have it expand? I mean, what, 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 what can we do? We so generally encouraging and welcoming, but it sounds to me as though it's... Uh, <clears throat> it's got to be more than that. It's got, we've got to pick out people and say, would you join this committee? Uh, yes, actually, from the very beginning, I've told people, the Chinese Americans, I said, people are so generous. Edie said, I'll be glad to tell you. And uh, who? Andy Fridley. Fridley. Uh, Fridley. And he said, I'll be glad to come to your group to explain to you, to tell you about town meeting. Many people said, if you want me to come to talk to you, to explain things to you, I'd be glad to. So I was encouraged by all these generous people, friendly people, that they want the Chinese Americans to be involved. Mm -hmm. They did not say anything negative about your not being involved. But they go the positive way, says, 
would you like me to come and tell you about it so you can be more involved? So I am very grateful, and I kept on saying that to people, that I felt welcome. I felt that people want us to get involved. And if you don't do it, it's a shame. People didn't point their fingers as, you didn't do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that the, doesn't work. Anyway. It doesn't work. Right. And the, the, several people told me, that's why we invite people to come to talk to us. And uh, so it is encouraging, and it's already started. And uh, I hope uh, right now, in fact, we have a small group, a subcommittee within Cal. It's called Community Task Force. Our job is to not to, of course you can't, not to be involved with the Chinese New Year's Party celebration. That's the another committee. Our job is mainly to reach out, search for Chinese Americans, and encourage, help them to run. Mm -hmm. Say, I would say, Dan, Precinct 3 has a slot. Do you want to try? Nah, I'm not sure. Oh, but you can. I'll help you. I'll get uh, uh, people to help you. So with a little push, yeah. some people would uh, uh, do that, and uh, gradually, it's a snowball. Now there's uh, six, seven town, town meeting members. Right. And then people say, oh, he can do it, she can do it. So I can and do I it. And I can do it. Yeah. So I think it started. You know, in, in any community, in any ethnic community, in this town or any others, there's not a lot of people who are enthusiastic and interested in participating. So I, I would imagine the same thing would be, would be true with the, with the Chinese community. But what you're saying is, let's get those people who are interested. Yes. And, and, and get them involved. That's right. With such a big number, of course, there are some uh, people, for instance, a single mom said, I love to, but I work seven days a week. Right. I can't. I said, I'm not asking you. And, you know, you just will keep you informed whenever you can do something. Another said, my child is only one year old. I said, wait till the kid goes to school. Then yeah. you can do it. Those yeah. accept it. And those, but yet on the positive side, there are enough people who are interested. Each time I meet somebody, I say, write down your email. Once I got you, you're <laughs> yeah. on my list. Yeah. I, yeah. That way, we get more and more people involved. It is a volunteer organization. Everybody has full-time job except me. My job is volunteers. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, they're busy, so I have a little more time and uh, more experience because I'm older. Uh, then I would dig out things and find that uh, uh, something we could do. So I think more and more people will see do that. And you know, I'm very excited. This is the first year Cal's being invited to march in the Patriots Day Parade. Oh, so I said, really? do it. Yeah. yeah, they they send it to Peter. Uh, you're invited. I say by all means. Yeah. I'll take over that. So I took over that, fill out the application form, was accepted. So I'm getting people to do. That's good. You know, like, yeah. Small step, yeah. one at a time. Yeah. Now Jack Edison was that the first? Uh, oh yes. Townwide campaign, Jack Edison. Yes. The yes. Jack late, asked uh, me. Selectman. Yes, Jack asked me, I want you to be my campaign manager. I said, come on, I don't know anything about campaigning. Now, when was this? Oh, this was, oh, many, many, 20-some years ago. Yeah. Many years ago. Not. But he, I have to say, he was my first mentor. He was so good to me. He taught me things. He helped me. This is how we do it. And I did it. I work hard, if I say so myself. If you give me a job and I accept it, I do a good job. If uh, I think I can't, I will not promise you. So we worked together and, uh, and it was very successful. 
uh, campaign he got in. Of course, it's easy to help him in. I, I told him, I said, it's easy to sell you when, you're, when the merchandise is good. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right? So this must have been in the early 70s, I think. Or, or, uh, or late 60s? No, 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 70s. Must be 70s. Yeah. Uh, 70s, 80s. So you ran his campaign. I ran his campaign. And, and we, uh, how did he have, did you know him before? Or? Uh, well, yes, before he his rate election, there was a C.C. Chow from Precinct 1. He was the first Chinese American elected to town meeting from precinct one. Unfortunately, he died in '95. He served several years, then he had cancer. So he started, and uh, Nancy Adler is pre from precinct one, and a good friend and supporter said that we invited Jack to C.C. Chow's house, and there was a room of a 20, 30 Chinese Americans showed up. Jack, uh -huh. a smart guy, <laughs> sees this is a group I can tap, I can befriend. So he just picked me and I was honored. And I did learn and I worked hard, very hard for him. And uh, so that's who started me. I learned everything how to run a campaign from him. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. really helped uh, uh, me to sort of guide Wei Don, mm -hmm. to have a precinct groups and all that, uh, signs and uh, letter writing, the phone calling, postcards and all that. So I knew what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really miss him. I liked him a lot. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he very both. So, what do you what do you see in the in the future? Um, what what percentage of the kids in school are are now higher higher than I said twenty percent Asian, but it's thirty percent children in, the schools. in schools yeah. more. And I feel that America. It, when I first came, it says melting pot. Everybody comes and go in there all melted. But I thought the the idea. It's not a melting pot. It's a chop suey plate. There's all colors, all cultures. We are in a big pot, America. But we also can maintain, take advantage of your cultural background. We keep the good ones. Through all the bad ones, uh, get involved because that's one of the bad things. You get involved and uh, you teach the kids to respect your parents, respect your elderly, and uh, yet you can express your opinions, and which was not in Chinese families. Chinese families, I don't think the kids can say anything. So. It's a melting, it's not a melting pot, but a chop suey pot. We, but we must work together. Thus, I wouldn't allow, like to see that, uh, oh, you get special treatment. I don't think anybody should get special treatment. If you come to America, America is a home, your home. And then we live by our home rule. We live by American rules. You can't say that Oh, we want the good things, but we don't want to share what we have. Mm -hmm. So I think sharing, for instance, I know uh, Naran wants to uh, have a more diversified uh, cultural background education. Uh, that I agree. When I first came here in 65, I opened a book on China from the library. I see people with the brains. That's a Qing dynasty. <laughs> yeah. There was no books. I think the Indians also... Uh, there was a big effort in the Indian community, community. to, to, to uh, 
put a lot of books, books into the library. On the modern, that's right, right. on the modern India. It's right. not what you think. It was a British, under British rule. So that I am all for. We teach world geography, not just America and Europe. Okay, mm -hmm. we teach world culture, and then it should be, indeed, be the world. I am all for that. But yet, on the other hand, we are, as Lexingtonian, as Lexingtonian, as you and you, mm -hmm. uh, we are part of Lexington. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be treated differently, especially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though I look different. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fascinating, and of course, what what happens with your chop suey analogy instead of the melting pot analogy is that that the uh, that the recipe's changing all the time. Right. You you don't want to be all the same. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. It's uh, it, it's mixed together. It tastes good, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. but uh, still, you you maintain your individuality. Yeah, it's a much much richer. Um, town uh, yes. now than it was when I moved here in 1949, or when you moved here in 1965. 65, 65. Right. See, right. people with children move move in, and uh, several. I was in a lot, but many families first lived in Burlington, Malden, uh, then once they have kids, once they have saved enough money. They want to move into Lexington. Yeah. I find it's not just the education, it's the people. Education is part of it. Hayden is part of it. And, uh, uh, but I find people. And I'm not the only one. You see, all us oldies don't move away. Yeah. We're still here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, <laughs> well, you're, uh, you're a model. Lexingtonian and a model citizen and and a pioneer and uh, we're just delighted you had the time to join us for this conversation. Oh, the honor and the pleasure is all mine, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.